well welcome back to the loft here weir yard and uh, it's really good to have you along and uh, today we've got something again a little bit different last week we did a full tour of my diesel locomotive collection and that did seem to go down really well with you that was as a result of people asking me about what diesel locomotives i had well, people have been asking me, inevitably, I guess, about steam locomotives. So, without further ado, let's get on and uh, let's take a look at some of the locomotives in my collection. First up I've lined up here on this track a few of my small shunting locomotives. I'm going to start going through these and then I'll swap them out and we'll uh, look over some of the other items that I've got. But first up is my Daypole Collectors Club London and South Western Railway Dockside B4 tank locomotive. This is number 91 in the very attractive London and South Western Railway P Green. When I saw this it was actually a deal clincher for me. I joined the club really for this locomotive more than anything else. I did get a lot more out of the uh, club besides this actually. It's uh, one of the good clubs to join. Uh, but this is a splendid locomotive. Now if you're going to try and DCC fit this, um, well that's where things break down a bit. Daypole, what on earth were you thinking about that? You practically uh, have to be ever so careful to do it. And if you get one thing wrong, it just automatically self disassembles itself. It's, it's a real nightmare to do this one. But um, it does look the part and aesthetics do count for an awful lot. Uh, I think I did do a box opening and review of this locomotive. So check that out if you want to learn more. But we've got a lot of locomotives to go through. So next up, we've got the Andrew Barclay from Hattons in CPC United Kingdom livery. And I like to think that the box opening and review that I did of this uh, was responsible for it being the one that sold out. Well, we can but dream. It's a great locomotive and it's actually one of the mainstay of my Grove Street Yard layout. Also from Grove Street Yard is one of the Hornby W4 Peckets. And this is number 11 in its Manchester Ship Canal, guys. And uh, it's really difficult, actually, to uh, get this close in and film these on this phone. But um, again, W4 Peckets from Hornby are a great locomotive. And I've got lined up here that one, the Huntley and Palmer's uh, Locomotive D in the blue, and the Works Leaf Green as Dodo. Now, these were the first three W4 Peckets that hit the market, and really they were so beautiful. I couldn't decide, so I bought all three. Subsequent batch, uh, this is the Lillis Hall uh, locomotive in the plain black, uh, which was the first of the follow-up liveries. I did get myself that, but I haven't got any of the other follow-up liveries, it has to be said. But I do have the locomotive C, Huntley and Palmer's on order, but it hasn't arrived as of the moment of filming this video. These are my ex Lancashire and Yorkshire pug collection and uh, there's two others. I'll come to those at the end which aren't here because they're in display cabinets. But first up, this is actually one of my favourites, 51231. This is the factory weathered example that Hornby released. I think it was the first factory weathered example that they did on this particular uh, class of locomotive. And um, I just really love this, so much so that it is one which I have hardwired DCC fitted um, I think I need to um, do a bit of work in there just to help disguise it in the cab, just looking at that. But um, certainly a uh, driver or fireman figure there would go a long way to help disguise that chip. Um, not the greatest of runners, uh, even when chipped, it has to be said. Um, they're a kind of a, an all or nothing warp speed locomotive, but I do love their charm. Next to her we've got 11250 in LMS livery. Then this was actually the first um, steam locomotive, in fact, the first of any type of locomotive I bought for the sort of more modern, up-to-date, highly detailed era prior to this. My uh, childhood collection was Hornby Double O, and I remember coming out of university, getting a good job and suddenly realising, you know what, 
I can just buy whatever I want. I don't need to get permission for that. So this was the locomotive that really caught my eye, 51222. And um, just bought it and never looked back, really, as you've probably seen from my collection. This one is really, it just shows my love of the pre-grouping livery. Number 19, this is actually from the days of Daypole, but outwardly pretty similar. Uh, it's in the Lancashire and Yorkshire livery, and I believe this may be one of the ones that survived in real life. But um, I do love my pre-grouping liveries, even if the Lancashire and Yorkshire livery is a bit... Uh, a bit tame and simple on these uh, small, lowly shunting locomotives. Next to her, I've got 51218. Uh, the a prototype of this actually is another of the preserved examples. There's two of these survive. And uh, this is the other one. I think she's at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. And uh, she was the second pug that I ever bought very quickly after buying 51222. Now, as I alluded to before, there are two more of these pugs in my collection. You have to excuse the sound of the rain outside. Those of you who have a conservatory will know that uh, it can be very noisy when it rains. But here we have 11217, the LMS pug that I alluded to, in a display cabinet. 11217 is a Daypole version of this model, uh, bought pretty cheaply second-hand, it has to be said. Up here, hidden away, 11232, this is my Hornby Pug, the other one I've got in LMS livery. I just keep finding myself picking them up as and when, and I've no doubt that as they come up at a good price, I probably will buy more of these, despite the fact that I've got no real intention of DCC fitting any of these other ones. From here on in, the picks are going to seem a little bit eclectic, and I'm not going to show you all of a particular class together because there's so many and the way they're on the shelves is not necessarily in order. So I'm going to show you them in the order I'm pulling them off the shelves now. This is 754 in SECR wartime and that's First World War wartime grey and this is a P-class from Hattons. Again I did a box opening and review on this and to this day I think it's the only one that's sold out completely. Now I did ask Hattons in a recent interview if they're going to reissue this livery maybe with a different running number but uh, remains to be seen but a beautiful little locomotive and uh, really pleased to have it in my collection next to her is a backman uh, 56xx class i think i'm sure you'll correct me if i'm wrong this one i bought from ian allen in manchester piccadilly on the station approach quite a while ago um but i do love this locomotive and i believe that uh, even though she looks absolutely nothing like the N2, Hornby 00 back in the day uh, produced uh, a member of this class um, looking remarkably like the uh, LNER N2 because they used exactly the same moulding apart from a different uh, safety valve bonnet on there. Um, but uh, this particular one, there's something about GWR locomotives. They have such a pleasing aesthetic. So she's a really good runner. And um, quite a novel design of cab. You can just lift that roof off, which makes putting a crew in there particularly easy. Next to her is Wadden, which uh, you will have seen on my What's the Difference Old versus New Terrier video. And this particular one is an older uh, Hornby model, and it's, it's pretty much the A1, A1X hybrid. It was good in its day, but uh, certainly being surpassed. The biggest issue for me, which um, once you notice it, you can't unnotice it, is that buffer height. Look at the difference in buffer height front and back on that. But this particular locomotive, she caught my eye back in my early days of collecting. So this has been in my collection for probably nearly 20 years. And um, I, I just have a little uh, like of this class. I will be buying the newer Rails one when it finally hits the market. Really looking forward to that. I already have the Hornby a uh, new really retooled version and that is a good model as well of itself but I don't think I'll be getting rid of some of these older models quite yet they um you know they they still sort of hold their own to some extent despite the few foibles next to her is a Backman uh, I think it's a 57xx class pannier and this is in the guise of L90, the London Transport livery. Now, London Transport bought, I think it was in the region of 12 or 14 of these over uh, the years out of service from VR. 
Not all of them were in service at the same time. Some of them got uh, reissued with a number of a withdrawn example. But this particular one, L90, is one of probably about half a dozen that Backman have released, either as special commissions from Kerno Model Centre or in the general main range. I think this was a main range one. Um, but again, it's a livery that actually really suits these pannier tanks. Moving on from her, I've got the Adams Radial. This is an Oxford Rail model, and uh, I did a box opening and review at this, on this at the time. It's not as good as the subsequent Hornby model, but it, uh, well, it was first to the market. And, well, as, as we all know, first to the market is worth an awful lot. So I did pick this up, quite a good price, but it's never been a particularly good runner. As the first locomotive release from Oxford Rail, it suffered from a lot of gripes. So um, a nice model, but needs some improvement. And for now, it remains pretty much uh, display cabinet fodder. Next batch of locomotives from the shelves. This is the Oxford Rail uh, N7, uh, but in its much, much earlier Great Eastern Railway grey. It almost looks like a photographic grey. It is a peculiar colour. And I can't imagine in real life that uh, that would have been a particularly easy to keep clean locomotive. But uh, despite scoring very, very lowly in my box opening review, as I said at the time, I review them as I get them because that's how you guys would be getting them from a shop. This was a great disappointment because it came with some serious running faults, shorting out, and I just felt the quality control just wasn't there. So it did score lowly, but this was the replacement for that model. And actually, on reflection, if I'd have got this model first time, it would have um, I would have been quite happy with it. It's got a good weight to it, yet to DCC chip it, but it does have a nice substantial presence to it helped by those cast metal tanks. Next to her, well, we're getting some of my favourite, my secret favourite locomotives here. So you're learning something about my preferences. Stevenson Clark Limited 57XX tank locomotive. Uh, in the livery as sold out of service, this uh, locomotive, the prototype, is preserved. And I believe that this model was produced, well, it was produced by the Backman Collectors Club but to commemorate its return to service, and I believe it was actually returned to service at least initially in this livery. So um, I really do like my industrial liveried locomotives, and this was actually one of the stalwart performers on Grove Street Yard before I got some more appropriate Traffic Park Manchester Ship Canal themed locomotives. Next to her, again, Midland Railway liveried uh, Ginty 3F tank locomotive although I think this is more of a retro livery I think this was an LMS locomotive in this sort of maroon livery which is harking back to Midland Railway days but I do love this it was a just trying to remember was this Cheltenham model yeah I think this was a Cheltenham model center special commission they did two of these uh, two different uh, special commission liveries this one and nice little segue there this one in the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. These had the nickname of Bagnalls on that particular line. But as number 24, she was a special commission. I believe number 23 appeared subsequently in the main range in the same livery. But this is the special commissioned one. I must actually get the number 23 at some point. Next to her, this is the first of my Hornby austerities. Now, I know that DJ Models brought out... An all singing, all dancing austerity, but actually, I'm still of the it's still at two minds whether to replace my fleet. Um, my feeling is that the Hornby X Daypol austerity is actually a really good model for its time, and a bit like the Terrier, still kind of holds its own to some degree. So, for now, Wimblebury number seven represents the first of actually quite a few in my collection. Uh, she's the only one that's up in the loft. The rest are in display cabinets. This is Harry, my uh, Hunslet Austerity that I alluded to. Uh, down here, there's Whiston that I also mentioned, which was the first Austerity that I bought. And then I've also got Cadley Hill number one in this really quite nice green livery. Now, I'm going to experiment, actually. I think Wimblebury will be the one which gets hardwired with a DCC decoder just to see how they perform. And if that's successful, then at least Cadley Hill number one will also find herself 
DCC chips, but that's my austerity collection for now. Keeping things a bit interesting by switching up the location on Weir Yard to show you these. This is a, a N-class locomotive, but in the South Eastern and Chatham Railway wartime austerity grey as number 810. Now, I, when I got this, I was really excited to get it because you know my stance on pre-grouping liveried locos. It was probably about the first pre-grouping liveried loco that Backman ever produced, and it was one half of a two locomotive boxed set to mark an anniversary and... Uh, the then new N-Class appeared in this livery and then it's Southern Railway livery as well. I got that set. I do have the other locomotive and we will get to it in time. But this is a favourite for me because for a long time it was uh, one of my few pre-grouping livery locomotives. Next to her, another pre-grouping livery locomotive. But this is Whitechapel, one of the last of the Hornby Old Style Terriers to be produced. It was done uh, as a twofer. There was this and another locomotive in, I think it was Kent and East Sussex Railway livery, done for the Collectors Club and sold for a very, very favourable price. It was actually the reason I joined the club that year was to get this and the other Terrier. Uh, I think it was about £25 each. It really was a very, very keen price. So um, she still, in my opinion, kind of holds her own, but I, I will reserve judgment when I finally get round to buying a similar livery terrier, either from Rails or Hornby, the newly retooled versions. In fact, um, I might well actually invest in the Rails one. I I'd love to be able to have a like-for-like -like comparison of the new Rails terrier, the actual production model, against the Hornby one. They were very, very kind to let me uh, do a comparison of the pre-production model, versus the Hornby model, and that was at Alexandra Palace earlier this year. So hopefully I'll get an opportunity to compare the production models. This is my one and only War Department 280. It's a Backman model, and it's quite an old Backman model now. And um, I would like to DCC fit it, but it's one where the chip socket, if it does have one, and I suspect that this one doesn't, will be in the locomotive. So this may need to be hardwired. She is a good performer, but uh, starting to show her age a little bit. And the tender drawbar assembly that Backman used to use on these it really does leave a little bit to be desired. So it's quite nice, actually, that they've updated that for the more recent locomotives. I talked a little bit about the um, Hornby Collector Club Terriers from a few years back now. And this is the other one, the Kenton East Sussex Railway Sutton in this beautiful green livery. And uh, not quite as favourite of mine as the LBSC Burnt Umber livery, but still nonetheless, quite an attractive locomotive. And even if she gets superseded by uh, retooled Hornby and Rails Terriers, uh, I think they'll still be at home for her in display cabinets. Next to her, this again, another one of my favourite locomotives. This is a Robinson 8K or l and 04 if you prefer. 280 heavy freight locomotive but this is the preserved example from the National Railway Museum in her original Great Central Railway livery and this is actually quite a beautiful and ornate livery even though it's really I suppose a humble freight locomotive and this was done as a special commission for the National Railway Museum and actually sold out quite quickly and um, I uh, got one when they were brand new. But I do get asked about her a lot. Uh, very pleased to have been able to get it. Never been reissued in this livery, I don't believe. Not in the main range or otherwise. And it's a real shame because I think that this livery really does suit the locomotive. Next to her, this has been a firm favourite type of locomotive for me. Going right back to my Hornby 00 days where I had 80054. Uh, but uh, here we have a Backman model as 80118, the standard class 4 mixed traffic 264 tank locomotive. Really great model and a really faultless performer. Next to her we have the Model Rail Special Commission of the USA Dock Tank in the uh, livery of uh, Frank S. Ross, the Longmoor Military Railway number 300. This is actually a really good runner. There's a lot of weight to this, and uh, it's one that I do look forward to being able to DCC fit in due time. 
Next to her, this is not the counterpart to the N-Class and the SECR Grey. This is uh, a Bankman Main Range 260 N-Class as Southern 1404 with smoke deflectors. This model was actually bought when new for, as a present for me. Actually, it was a birthday present from 53A Models in Hull. And uh, she's done a lot of mileage, actually, over the years. Um, but has recently been the subject of a how to clean up motors um, suspected burnt out motors video, which went down quite well. And really, electrical contact cleaner really did work wonders on this locomotive. The next locomotive's up. This, oh, I can never remember whether it's the 3F or the 4F. In fact, if we get close in there, it's actually a 4F. <laughs> I can never remember. Bankman have produced both the 3F and the 4F, so it turns out this is the Fowler 4F, and it's a wonderful model. I don't think this is a factory applied weathering. I bought it second hand for a very favourable price from Arcadia Models, and I'm sure you'll agree that is a really good weathering job, plus a crew added on there. I'm really looking forward to getting her DCC fitted. In fact, she's one that if I can find a chip and speaker, that will fit into the tender. I did try with some of the TTS ones, but the speaker proved far too big. Um, I, I would like to sound fit this locomotive. I think it would really benefit from that. Next to her, Andrew K. McCosh, uh, number 60,003. This is the first of what you will see are quite a few A4 Pacifics. I do love this class of locomotive. She came as part of, I think she was in the North, Thumbrian set or was that William Whitelaw? Um, either way, I have a soft spot for the super detailed Hornby A4s and have been known to just keep picking them up. Uh, so this is one of those that uh, just couldn't let go second hand, uh, really favourable price, probably from Arcadia models. But I do love these locomotives. Up next to her is a Backman City class, a city of Birmingham, but in a wartime khaki livery. This is First World War, and she came part of the ambulance train set. Uh, but yeah, she, th they were a beautiful locomotive. Commissioned by the National Railway Museum to represent City of Truro, once they passed through to the main range, we got a whole plethora of uh, other liveries, and this is one of them, and it's nice to see some of the perhaps slightly more unusual liveries, including this wartime khaki livery. So I was quite pleased to get the full set. Um, it's a good addition to my collection. Quick change of tempo. This is my Jubilee class as uh, Hong Kong. She was the subject of one of my very first box opening and reviews. Uh, really nice locomotive. Got her from Hatton's in one of the big, big sales. So got her for a price that was really um, too good to turn down. Next to her is the locomotive, again, being subject of a box opening and review. This is one that Derry, big time friend of the channel, managed to source at a really good price for me. So it's uh, one of the Riddles 5MT standard class fives. Uh, again, both of these, they're older style models, but still pretty good runners. Next up, my radial tanks, uh, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. This is number 1008. This was a National Railway Museum a collaboration with Backman. They produced a couple of models in this lovely eye-catching uh, Lancashire and Yorkshire livery. This particular one with the arc Lancashire and Yorkshire across the uh, tanks there. And then the earlier version is the same locomotive but without that on the, the livery. In a way it's a little bit of a shame that I've basically got the same locomotive twice. But I've noticed it's about to hit the main range with a different running number but in this eye-catching livery. So... It is quite tempting to buy another. Uh, there's something about these. They've got that lovely Edwardian stroke Victorian charm. Next up, we've got City of London. This is my other GWR City class. And this is in the very, very ornate early GWR livery with that kind of monogram on the tender for the GWR. It's very eye-catching and I do love my pre-grouping liveries. And uh, the thing about this was it was very firmly a pre-grouping GWR livery variation. So I found myself being attracted to this rather than the City of Bath that was released at the same time as it. Next to her, this is another National Railway Museum commissioned loco from Backman. 
And this is the uh, uh, Atlantic 442, Great Northern Railway. This is, uh, they produced three versions of this. They did it in the early BR livery, l &ER livery, and the original Great Northern Railway livery. And of course, pre-grouping and me, well, we go together quite easily. So this was the one that I had to get. Um, I've, I've seen the other two around. They're still available and are very tempting. But I've also seen that Macman has announced a new different running number version in this livery. So I can only hope that uh, Great Northern Railway coaches will follow them along at some point to... Uh, enable a really nice train to be made up but for now um this is one of my favorite locomotives and actually it does perform pretty well backman have got that chassis just right next to her another backman stroke national railway museum collaboration this is butler henderson the director class 440 in this very fancy ornate livery and there's shortly to be a new release of uh, the, this locomotive in this livery, but in the main range. So do look out for that if you missed this first time round. But it's a beautiful livery. I do like these great Central Railway liveries. Well, there we are, halfway through my steam locomotive collection. Uh, I thought this was a bit too big to put up as a single video. So we're going to be splitting this out over a couple of days. So don't forget to check on back. And you can follow up with the second part of my extensive steam locomotive collection tour. But until next time, don't forget to uh, like this video, share it too, and also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. It's been really great having your company, and I hope to see you back here next time. Until then, take good care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, and oorail.co.uk. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks, and catch you later.